Hi everyone, Jonathan J. Reinhardt here from Wargaming Recon. I'm coming at you with today's pandemic coffee break. Today is Friday, March 27th. Yes, I had to double check the date. <laughs> March 27, 2020. Oh my goodness. So I am at work. <laughs> I feel like I say the same thing. I feel like living Groundhog Day is what it is. But I am at work, and just like when I'm at work, I get to take a coffee break. So I'm on coffee break, and I'm spending it with you. I have my tea, my Tim Hortons mug. Not sponsored by them, but man, I wish we were because I'd love some Tim Hortons stuff. And um, I drank decaf Earl Grey hot with. Uh, uh, whole milk still because I made this before my wife went to the supermarket and Splenda. So good morning, Rob. How are you? I'd like to know what each of you are drinking. We've had some interesting um, beverage choices lately. Mm. Not as warm as I'd like it, but that's okay. Uh, and you'll notice I don't actually, I don't have my um, fleece thingy on. I am still in the studio. It's still, it's chillier than I'd like. I get a space heater uh, and I turn it off so that you can all hear me because otherwise you'd hear bzzz, and I figured you might actually want to hear me instead. Rob says he's drinking Texas pecan, rocking the solo mug again. I love that hand solo mug. 500 points for Rob. There you go. Good morning, Nathan. Uh, I know you've been up for a long, long time, so I'm curious what you are drinking as well. I have my Earl Grey decaf tea here. We had a great conversation yesterday, everyone, about whether you could or could not make decaf cold brew. And it turns out you can. I never knew that. Um, sorry, itchy hair. Uh, yeah. Three cups of coffee. Jesus, Mary and Joseph. Good, sir. Three cups. That's a lot. And it wasn't that early. It was only eight o'clock, you said. I start work at eight. My goodness, man. Uh, three cups. Same cup of decaf tea. Woman up, yo. That's my new thing I like to say because of, um, I'm a big fan of Cyanide and Happiness, the cartoon. And um, <laughs> uh, Adrian and I talked about it on the podcast before about how we both love the purple shirted eye stabber. But this is a uh, strip in there. And usually we don't share the strips on the show because they're not family friendly actually far from it, uh, but there's this one strip where this guy, uh, male character, goes into this bar and goes up to the bartender and says, give me the strongest drink you have. Um, uh, or, or no, give me the, um, it's something like, give me the girliest drink you have. And um, the, the bartender who's female gives him a, a, a drink and says, whiskey straight up, woman up, yo. <laughs> uh, and I'm paraphrasing, but it just it makes me laugh. <laughs> a lot, so I, I do really enjoy that. Uh, Nathan says he's figuring out how to spend the company's money on video toys. Ooh, I like toys. Um, oh, so big news. Actually, let's start off. For any of you who are into role-playing games, you might like to know that GaryCon is still happening. They've canceled the physical event, which is sad, but it actually, I guess it began last night, but they're doing a virtual convention. So if you go to GaryCon.com and you scroll down just a little bit, and there's a link that says Gary Khan 12 has canceled the physical gathering. That's in bold due to government bans and to protect all of our attendees in the communities. Please see the full release from Luke Gygax here, blah, blah, blah. Uh, but then it says we encourage everyone to join us in celebrating safely and remotely from home by signing up for virtual Gary Khan 12. So if you click on that, you can get in by badges for free buy, but it's free. And so then you can go to events. And so one of my buddies, Jay Libby's running a virtual role playing game. Uh, and actually he's doing uh, a few things, but you should check it out. So this stuff today and tonight and over the weekend, it's something for you to do, uh, which would be really, really cool. Now that we're all sequestered and we're having this new norm, whether, well, uh, who knows how temporary it is, but this new normal, it's nice to get some gaming in. So Gary Khan is doing that and that's just really exciting stuff that you can do. Uh, and we also have some more discounts that have been coming out. So more and more uh, places are doing all sorts of discounts. So if you are a fan of the Two Fat Lardies and their products, uh, in particular, their World War II Combat at Platoon level game, Chain of Command, it's 20% off for the PDFs. So you get, uh, they actually have, they have tons of options. So you can get... The uh, Rules and Ultimate Bundle, is which is 20% off. You can get the Blitzkrieg 1940 hard copy and PDF bundle, 20% off. The Chain of Command hard copy and PDF bundle, also 20% off, 20% off. You can get 
Uh, what other options do they have? They have Chain of Command Complete Bits Bundle, 20% off. Chain of Command Big Bits Bundle, 20% off. Blitzkrieg 1940 PDF Handbook is 20% off. Uh, regular Chain of Command uh, PDF Rules or Tablet Edition, both 20% off. Um, at the Sharp and Campaign Handbook is 20% off. And I'm hearing rumors they're going to do Sharp's Practice as 20% off as well for all the PDF stuff. So you can get uh, just a standard basic Chain of Command PDF or Tablet Edition um, digital rules, 20% off for £12.80. Um, and I wish their website would just show stuff in dollars as well, but it doesn't. Uh, so if you're into that, that's something to get as well. Hey, Crisis Point, it's nice to see you. Um, Crisis says it should have been the Crisis Point Wargaming Weekend starting today. They're... Uh, sequestered <laughs> as it were and he's playing solo game with shot practice so that's really cool um people are finding ways to game which is something i really like and speaking of solo gaming um of course you can get all the two for laddie stuff that i talked about that's on sale and even stuff that's not just go ahead and buy it um but Frostgrave is free <laughs> and they have a book of solo scenarios free pdf so the, if you go to the uh osprey website and you just add in the ebooks of these the pdfs of the digital versions of frostgrave and then the um solo rules are called dark alchemy uh you put those into your uh, basket and then you need to use a coupon code so make sure you get this right uh and they have it all caps so i don't know if it matters but all caps f g v and the number 2020 uh, so you put that in, and then you'll get these for free. They're also doing uh, every week five, I think it is, um, five ebooks for free. You can get them all. You just add them in, and there's a coupon code to use, and you get them all for free. So make sure that you do that as well till you can get some good reading in while you have all this stuff going on. I really love how the community is coming together and supporting one another and offering discounts and freebies to help gamers out. And people are flocking and supporting the community with purchases and all sorts of stuff. Uh, I've often said that tabletop gamers in general, but tabletop war gamers in particular, are really good about helping one another and being very supportive. So that's just a really cool thing. Rob said last, uh, he had an online game of Check Your Six last night. Seven players, my goodness, from Texas to Virginia. Zeros, can courses, lots of fun. He roll, used Roll20. I'm not familiar with that. I've heard of it, though. Uh, great tool. They use Discord for voice com uh, communications. Next week, doing Black Sheep Squadron scenario. Very, very cool. Uh, I know Discord is very popular, and we've never used it. We've asked at one point if anyone in our audience wanted us, if there was demand, really, from all of you <laughs> for us to set up a Discord server for working with Recon so people could chat or whatever, and crickets. But if that's changed, please let us know because uh, we'll do it. I mean, if people want to chat and or whatever, I know you can do audio. You can text as well on it. Uh, text, I mean, instant message or whatever uh, as well. So you can do all these kind of things on it. But if people want it, we'll do it. Uh, I've got some cool stuff, and I didn't grab it. I'm a, uh, I'll get it in a second because I'm excited about it. But I have other cool stuff I want to show you. So... Uh, on the podcast ages ago, right? We talked about backing the Dwarven Forge Caverns Deep Kickstarter, which was um, another Kickstarter that they've done uh, to create underground caverns with their uh, modular uh, pieces made out of Dwarvenite. And it's really, really cool. And I think I've done some videos with the pieces I've got. I've put pictures up online at least. But it took a while because with all that, I was supposed to get extra stuff. And it just came the other day. So whenever you back a Dwarven Forge Kickstarter, you're supposed to get a tote bag. It's custom for the Kickstarter. So this is a Caverns Deep one. Beautiful artwork. And then on the back, I know reusable bags are not in vogue right now because of the virus and the pandemic and everything. But I'm keeping this, <laughs> keeping this safe. And then also, because it's intended for people who do in role-playing games, but not only... You get a map. So this is really cool. Uh, map of some caverns with some cool text. 
Uh, I presume that Stefan Picorni did the map, but I honestly, it doesn't say, and I don't know. I haven't asked him. I should, but he's head honcho over there, although Nate Taylor handles day-to-day. -day. And so th they made it look all kind of nice and old, and you can see on the back how the paper is and everything. Uh, this kind of stuff just gets me really excited. And then I forgot about this, but there's a special dice, a special D20. And the 20 is, uh, <laughs> there you go, because it's the Forge, Dwarven Forge. It's metal, uh, very heavy, uh, nice dice, beautiful dice. So I'm very excited for this. And I think they've done this for every Kickstarter as well. I'm not 100% positive on that, but I think that they have. And um, so it's just, it's really cool to get some of this kind of stuff in the mail. And, you know, I sprayed it with Lysol <laughs> and everything just in case because I am in a high risk category uh, for the virus, which would not be good if I got it. Let me show you one other thing that I've been working on. I thought I grabbed, but while I grab it, yesterday I told you that I wanted you to be. Um, getting pictures of your messy workspaces the messier the better and so some people have submitted them and i love for you to be taking photos and thinking about your messy workspace if you haven't done it yet i think we'll push off the contest because someone will win the one something i don't know what um, but i think we'll push it off to monday uh is what it is so think of that while i get this Sorry, everyone. I had grabbed what I'm about to show you, and I put it down, and I thought I put it down right here, and I actually put it down somewhere else. So I've been working on the livestock buildings for the Russian village from Thanks to the Basement. I built a chicken coop. <laughs> so it's really cool. It has a whole chicken coop thing. And I actually I had to talk to a friend of mine who has chickens because I was like, what is this room here for? Uh, and she said, it's a nesting uh, box. So the birds go in there when they want to nest, and I guess that's where they lay the eggs, and you can pull them out, and then they hang out here. And you can see I used um, the Sterling, actually I used Sterling Battlemire on this. I figured it'd be extra gross for all the chickens running around, but on the base, and got the glued in and working on that, and I finished up my irregular fences. So these are pretty cool, and they just need to be dry brushed. So we'll have a grand dry brushing. And actually yesterday, after the live stream, I got contacted by a wonderful listener who, sorry, I got something on my mouth. Uh, a wonderful listener, Mr. Lip, who said that um, if I want a good alternative to using the Citadel Sterling Battlemire or MUD, I should go to Michigan Toy Soldier who's having a sale, which we talked about on an earlier live stream. Uh, and I should look at a product by MIG, M-I-G, it's called Ammo, and it's actually, it's texture stuff. So they recommended either dark mud, excuse me, ground, or muddy ground. It comes in a bigger tub. Uh, it's $12.99, uh, 250 milliliter jar, so that's actually a whole lot more uh, than what you get for the GW stuff, and it's cheaper when you figure out how much you get and everything. So that's really cool. So I'm going to look at that. I'm creating a, <laughs> a shopping list, and I will be using the discount that we talked about uh, previously from Michigan Toy Soldier. So you can order from them by going to michtoy.com. And as far as I know, they are still shipping. They're still doing all that kind of stuff, so you can get whatever you need from them and do all that. And today the weather is nice. It's Friday, right? So I'm actually going to go out and do some spray painting and priming, and I need your input. So please tell me which of the following you think I should do next to spray paint. So I'm not gonna actually build them next because I still gotta finish my livestock buildings and I gotta finish the dry brushing for all the things I need dry brushing, the outhouse the fences and all that. But I need to speak up. <laughs> so, oh. Oh, here we go. We have things in the basement, wooden crates. 
So this would be a nice little small thing that I could do. And these are provided to us by them for review. So they'll be reviewed on the podcast as well. Just nice little wooden crates. And I know Jamie would tell me they would. You don't need to paint them. And he might be right. <laughs> so if you think I don't need to paint these, go ahead and tell me that too. <laughs> Maybe I won't. Should I go for, and this is huge, industrial building number one. <laughs> Uh, also provided to us for review retail $67 or 60, no $67.50. And look at all of this. And actually when York sent it, he realized he kept sending wrong parts. And so <laughs> I get an extra package <laughs> with a little note. Now it should work. York. <laughs> so which one of these should I, God, this is so, it's a lot of stuff. It's unwieldy. No wonder why it's expensive. Um, which of these should I spray paint next? Uh, and I guess just because this was in there before, there is a chimney option, industrial chimney. So I don't know what you think I should um, spray paint next. I purposely am excluding, I'm excluding the feudal Japanese arch bridge because I think I need to break from Japan for the time being. <laughs> so factory building number one, I guess chimney or uh, the wooden uh, crates. So I'd love to know what you think I should paint next uh, or prime rather, because I, I prime before I, I build. And uh, that's something I didn't used to do actually. I used to build and then prime. And I, when I was doing some fences or walls, I guess, for the feudal Japanese um, amateur of Martin Fort, I was getting rather angry <laughs> and frustrated. And that's when Jorg told me just, spray them on the sprue and then build them because it'll go easier and I, I wouldn't be so mad at myself and he was right so i know not everyone likes to do that because maybe you're painting things that get hidden but it's just spray paint so you're not using as much and so you just do a little and, and you're okay so i think that's fine uh as it were uh what other exciting stuff do i have to share with you so um if you're over in the uk you probably have heard your prime minister is officially infected with the virus so that's something he he makes history, whatever you think of him, <laughs> as the first head of state to officially have COVID-19. That's one for the history books. Um, and Adrian and I are planning to record a podcast episode tonight. I believe, well, we don't actually have a topic, but <laughs> um, I believe we might talk about some remote gaming options, I think. So we'll see. Uh, but that'll come out at some point. I don't know. And we have a new podcast episode. I've been talking about this all week. Uh, coming out on Monday, Gordon Firemark, who's a lawyer, one of the top lawyers in Southern Florida, um, Florida, Southern California. My goodness, this is a crazy week. Southern California for Entertainment Law is coming on the episode, and he will talk about copyright, trademark, and intellectual property in the realm of 3D printing and recasting. And I know recasting has been a hot topic and we wanted to get better educated about it. So he shares the legalities of what's involved and things like that. So I found it rather enlightening and I hope you will as well. So that drops on Monday. And um, if you back us on Patreon, you'll get that beforehand. So that happens as well. And we got that going. And what else do we have going? Actually, it's Friday, so it'll be the weekend. So we'll be busy with the kids doing, I don't know, whatever. Uh, and all that kind of stuff. And just life is weird lately, really. Uh, all these things that one used to do, you don't do anymore. Like, for example, go outside, right? You used to go outside and going to work or going wherever. And I've been here. <laughs> I've been sequestered here because I am uh, at high risk. So uh, actually, I did a big thing yesterday. Uh, my wife and our youngest child uh, went outside and ran around for like 10 minutes. And I went out with them for about five minutes. I was like, I'm in the front lawn and running around. I was all excited. And that was like a big thing for me to be out and doing that. Um, otherwise, I don't really go outside anymore. <laughs> so life is just really weird. Uh, it doesn't bother me. Uh, per se, because I'm an introvert and being around other people while I enjoy it is also just exhausting to me. 
Uh, so having the ability to not do that is nice. It just it's difficult with children, especially young children, trying to find ways to keep them occupied because they have all this energy and they're bouncing off the walls and trying to do everything. So trying to do whatever to keep them um, engaged is challenging right and i think we're all kind of facing that in some way or another and of course my wife and i like many of us right uh we're working from home although some of us have been furloughed without pay which is quite awful actually um yeah that's just well i don't want to get into politics but that makes me mad <laughs> it just makes me really mad uh so there's that as well and just trying to deal with all the things uh, for what life is like right now um and i was actually thinking you know that um to bring it back to gaming wouldn't it be great when you get like a kit like say an mdf kit that you could just get components from it that you really like so for example um and i guess it's proved to be too expensive at one point but games workshop used to allow you to just buy sprues of stuff like you just need a sprue you pay like three bucks or whatever it is and i think warlord had done that for a while so like for example i love this chicken coop. Instead of buying the whole farm la- farmyard animal kit, why can't I just buy like eight chicken coops? And I- I'm sure I could. I could just contact Jorg and be like, Jorg, I need a lot of chicken coops. Can you help me out and like tell me how much I owe you? And he would do it and he would do it for you too. So you just contact him and, and figure out um, what it is. But like, instead of spending just under 20 bucks, or I'm looking up the price now, for the livestock buildings, if you don't need the, um, all the, like the, the big pig trough and the fences and the pig pen and everything, if you just want chicken coop, why pay almost 20 bucks for, if this is really what you just want? And I mean, the fences probably would be good to get anyway, but how many pig pens do you really need? Maybe someone else could use it, make it and, and give it as a gift or something. Uh, I don't know, but I just, I want more chicken coops. Hey, Aaron, it's nice to see you. Thank you for joining us today. Hope you're doing well and being um, safe and healthy. Um, and, oh, actually, this is an interesting thing. So we talked yesterday about the fact that tabletop dot events might be closing and might not be. They're trying to find a way to stay afloat. Uh, Gary Khan, since it's happening now, they're actually still using tabletop events for it because tabletop events is still going. Uh, and so you actually go through their site um, to buy your badge, which is free and everything, and you take it and stuff and do your events, sign up. So the great thing is since they're still operational and you can use it for the virtual carry con, you have all the great functionality. So that's not gone or anything. So that's really cool. You can still get that and do all the things. And we'll see how it progresses for the future. I hope tabletop.events gets to stick around, but I guess we'll just kind of wait and see what happens with everything. A lot of life is in flux, isn't it? That can be really tricky, uh, but you try the best you can and you just do what you can. And actually, I was just looking over on the side and there's something else I wanted to highlight in case you're ever feeling bored, especially nowadays. Alyssa Faden, who was a guest at TotalCon this year. Come on. Focus better. You cannot see that. You stupid thing. No, you really can't. Well, heck. Uh, so if you go to alyssafaden.com, A L Y S S A F A D E N.com, you go there and she's a cartographer. She's done stuff for Gygax Magazine. She's done all sorts of stuff. She does beautiful artwork. And you can watch her. She has a Twitch channel. You can watch her as she's map making. She has a Patreon campaign if you want to back her on that as well. And so she has all that kind of stuff, which is really handy uh, to check out. And she's just a wonderful person. And her husband's really nice. And they're great people. And I'm a big fan of hers. And um, she's actually, I'm going to get hit hard by this too. She's the convention organizer for Enfilade, which is the largest historical miniatures gaming convention west of the Mississippi. Enfilade, the sponsor of the show. <laughs> Man, I feel so bad. Uh, they're going to get kicked in the teeth because uh, I think they've had to cancel uh, or postpone whatever they're doing. So we'll see. Rob wants to know what's the Michigan Toy Soldier discount code. So we gave that early in the week and I'm going to have to look it up again because I don't, I'm going to need it for myself as well. Um, 
And let's see. So I believe if this is correct, I guess the only way to know is to do it. You get 20% off. You have to use promo code, and these are all numbers, 191919. So that's 191919, and that'll give you 20% off your order. It's only good March 25 to the 29th, so get your orders in now. Don't wait. Oh, man, I should just buy a bunch of the um, MIG uh, uh, mud stuff because, oh, man, <laughs> I think I'm going to go through a lot of it. Uh, so, yeah, make sure you get that. Paul, thank you for joining us. I hope you're doing much better. Hang in there. Things will be okay. We're here if you need us, really. And um, <laughs> uh, so that's going on as well. Uh, so that discount code again for Michigan Toy Soldier is 191919. Those are numbers. Go to michtoy.com. I'm going to be picking up the, I think I'm going to get both dark mud ground and muddy ground. It comes in a 250 milliliter jar. Um, Paul, what's that? Do you know what that is in like what the U.S. uses in standard and not in metric? Or am I going to have to convert this? Um, hey, Alexa. Convert 250 milliliters to American weight. Sorry, I'm not sure. It's not sure. Well, that's useless. We'll just go to the internet. It is how many? Um, let's see how many ounces are you? 8.5 ounces, roughly. So there we go. Uh, Nathan says, I need more AK Interactive Ultra Mat, so I'll be using the code for that. There you go. And you know what? I think when you all order, and I don't know if there's a way to put a comment in there, but if there is, you should tell them that you ordered because of us. And Paul flew it out. That, I think you're right. So if you tell Michigan Toy Soldier you're ordering because of us, that might mean something. Because I tell you, I'd love to work out an arrangement with them, a uh, sponsorship or something, or a way to get extra discount codes for people who like the podcast and everything. So that'd be really cool if we could do that. If they see they're getting business from us, uh, maybe it can. So that would be pretty cool. And no matter what, get what you need. You have until, what did I say, March 29th? I'm just checking that up again. Yeah, March 29th, 2020 to get that. And there are other discounts. So in case people have missed them, I'm just going to run through some of these from earlier in the week. So you can get Casemate Publishers, have 40% off titles on the page, you use coupon code 891-21. Clash of Arms Games has discounts on their website. Uh, this is not to be confused with Clash of Spears, but Clash of Arms Games, if you go to clashofarms.com, they have all sorts of discounts there as well. And then on top of that, we got DreamPod 9 is doing a sale until March 31st. Uh, so if you head on over to their website, you can get all sorts of stuff as well. Dave's bag is trained 10% off on um, orders of complete outfit. So that's pretty cool. I talked to Michigan Toy Soldier. Ministry of Building Authority. Here's one for everyone. 15% off across the board sale on everything. That's really awesome. Things in the basement. 10% off discount on all kit laser cut kits. Use code I don't know if you need the hashtag or not, but it's hashtag stay home. And Things in the Basement is also doing other, they're not like coupon codes, but they're doing other specials that you can get. Um, so I'm just trying to pull those up right now. And they're going to be having more coming out. So basically, uh, here we go. Uh, so you spend 19 bucks and you use a special code and you get some cool stuff. So one thing is, um, if you like some any of the Stossy's Heroes, you can either get... Uh, a one two pack um, blister, or you can get two single blisters. Nineteen dollars includes shipping in the continental U.S. And you use coupon code Hero, so for nineteen bucks you get actually a lot. That's actually a great deal. And then he also has from his futuristic line, uh, you can get future factory container sets. It's four small containers and one large container. Nineteen dollars includes shipping for continental U.S. Use coupon code CONTAINED, and that'll get you those. They're really cool containers. The Wargaming Company, who's a sponsor of the show, uh, has 25% off across the board. I highly recommend you go and buy the Knock Trees, N-O-C-H. They are my favorite trees to use. 
just get them and then buy a regular basis from things in the basement and use your um uh, 10 percent off discount and i showed you yesterday what they look like uh but i had york make those so they're really really cool and then there's been discounts just like all over the place so we just kind of been um breadcrumbing them uh all along but everywhere so discounts here the free ebooks from osprey you can get um frostgrave pdf and the um solo uh, scenarios for free using uh fgv 2020 coupon code on the osprey website two fat Lardies has 20 percent off of the chain of command pdfs or digital editions uh and i think they're going to do the same with uh, what did i say um, with sharp um, practice, so you have that as well, and just everyone's doing all sorts of discounts. Do you kind of? I'm just looking to see if we have any, any others. And Paul said so many cool places over there. Yeah, there's a lot. But I got to say, you have a lot where you're at too. Unfortunately, because your your whole country's in lockdown, we can't buy anything. <laughs> I mean, we could. It's just it's not going to go anywhere. So like, um, we talked earlier in the week about the specials that uh, Warlord Games was doing every day because they shut down. I don't. I think they stopped the specials. I mean, you could probably still order them, I guess. They're just not going to go anywhere. And the Perry Brothers uh, from Perry Miniatures was saying that um, you could just, they were going to sell this stuff eventually, or you could get a refund. Um, and I'm just going to look at the special offers. Yeah, they do still have special offers, but they're not the same community deals that they were doing before. So I think they realized that they can't. Um, and World of Games do the community deals anymore. So <laughs> I hope people back those and got those while they could. Uh, so there's that as well. Paul says, oh, I need to start Frostgrave. Yeah, I played Frostgrave. I played a game of it at Total Con. A great game. And the guy who ran and did all the train, um, he moved away. So I was really sad. But I will tell you, if you want to do Frostgrave, get the rules for free, right, from Osprey. So you get the free PDF from the solo thing. Then you head on over to Things in the Basement. I, I really, can you tell I spent a lot of time looking at all this kind of stuff. So head on over to Things in the Basement, and they have a section called Inspired by Frostgrave. And so they have haunted houses. They have a mausoleum. They have a shipwreck, library, uh, books for the library. They have wizard stuff, horse sleighs, dog sleds. Everything you can use to make a Frostgrave table. It's just it's really cool. And then Frostgrave has its expansion, Ghost Archipelago. And so they made stuff inspired by Ghost Archipelago. So the, this is all Mayan kind of stuff. I talked about before the two columns, which are some of my favorite things. We did a whole podcast episode about it. Where Adrian told me I was wrong, uh, as he often does. But he's wrong, and he's not here to defend himself. So, oh, well. Uh, <laughs> so there's all that. And then Foreground is offering all the inspired by Ghost Archipelago stuff as well. And of course, foreground's closed because in UK in lockdown, but you could get from there, but not at a discount. Uh, and they're pre-painted, so you just build it. Or you buy the originals from things in the basement and use that 10% off discount. So there you go for that. Uh, and Paul says, yep, and there's actually sunshine for once. Ha ha, it's on hold at the moment. Ha ha. Yay! All wonderful things. So those are what's happening here. And I'm just checking to see if there's any other special promotions or discounts. Oh, and actually, there is one um, that I want to make sure I get correct because I think I um, forgot to mention this yesterday. Uh, hold on. No, It's for Karen Sawe Publishers. And they were doing, I can't find it. It might be on their website, but if you go there, they would do, I think you got a free issue, a free PDF of, you could pick one issue of like Ancient Warfare, Ancient History Magazine, or Game Soldiers and Strategy, or Medieval Warfare, and you could get one for free. And I can't remember exactly what that was, but go to their website for that, because I think I forgot to mention that to everyone. So go to the website for that as well. And... That is all I can think of. And actually, I'm running out of time for my coffee break. So I thank you all for joining me for today's pandemic coffee break. It is Friday, March 27, 2020. We'll be back on Monday with another pandemic coffee break. And Monday is also when the new podcast episode drops. So make sure you check for that. Um, things and stuff and whatever's. Um, 
Oh, Rob says Battlefront um, for the Flames War online store has free shipping, so that's really cool too. Battlefront doing some nice stuff there. So thank you everyone for participating and being part of this. And remember, be good, be kind, both to yourself and others. Just try your best. And good enough is the best you can do. Then that's perfectly fine. Don't beat yourself up over it. Uh, So that is um, just how life is right now. So that's okay. Uh, Have a good weekend. Enjoy the rest of your Friday. And we'll be back on Monday with another pandemic coffee break. We're going to keep on doing these for as long as the pandemic continues where I'm working from home and can do it. So we'll have that going. And it'll be, of course, at 1030 a.m. Eastern Standard Time on Monday. But if you can't catch us live, don't worry. It's saved to our Facebook page. And then it's also gets put up on YouTube on our channel there. So you can see that. And we promote it through our Twitter uh, account. So you can see that. And I feel like there's one other thing I'm supposed to mention about. Oh, um, messy desk, messy workspace. Make sure you get photos into our fan club Facebook page. And uh, we'll pick a winner uh, for Monday. So we'll do that. And it should be fun. So thank you all again. Be safe. Be happy. Be healthy. Be well. And know that no matter how busy you are, no matter how much time you're spending thinking, is one chicken coop enough? The answer is no. You know that you gotta, you need to, you have to. That's right. Keep on gaming. Thanks all.